Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC to do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a split system beer cooler. Not 100% sure which condenser unit is which but it has to be one of these two. A bit tight to get in here but it's gotta be one of these two and man look at this this defrost clock is on the floor and just cracked so is this one sheesh okay so right off the bat this one's running this one isn't i'm assuming possibly this is the one with the issue right now okay if you guys can see we got an orange light it says orange power and then green status i don't know what green would even mean i got my field piece wireless temperature probes and gauges there's the high side let's get these on here just to get an idea of what's going on with these small systems before I put any gauges on or anything like that I always like to do the probes so you don't lose any charge let's see what's going on in here are we being held out by the pressure control are we being held out by the thermostat what's going on why are we not working according to this our suction line has a 81.9 PSIG standing pressure and our high side has an 85.2 PSIG standing pressure so we're equalized uh, somewhere between 82 and 85 pounds. What's going on? Who's holding us out? Is it the pressure control? Hold up, this unit just started. This is 134A. Head pressure is kind of high. Back pressure is pretty high as well. Look at that head pressure climbing. And it just shut off. Can't even get that cover off. Let's check this pressure control. You see how we have voltage across of that right now? It's the pressure control holding us out. So it's shut down on high pressure. There's, there's no way. We gotta see what this is set for, but it can't be the back pressure considering we're at 40 something for this type of refrigerant, 134A. We got a low back pressure in a normal operating conditions. So it seems to be that, that we shut off on on head pressure can't even see this thing all right so what i did is i bypassed that control so it stays on and look at that head pressure climbing 270 and going yeah we shut off on head pressure for sure Okay, so we now know we're getting high head pressure and we do know that it's the pressure control actually doing its job holding us out. The thing is, where's the water coming from? So we have a high pressure issue and it's water cooled. Are we moving water? Valves are open, right? This one shares the same water so if there was an issue, they both would have that. So what, what restricts the water? It's gonna be this water regulating valve. Are we moving water? You know, there's nowhere to check pressures for that or anything. What can we do? Wonder if the water regulating valve failed 
Can it be restricting water? It does look all rusted up over there. I wonder if I adjust it, see if we can adjust that head pressure. If you guys look closely, we have two rings here. The bigger ring is supposed to be for the low pressure, higher ring for high pressure. If you look, there's only one window on here and it's only telling us about the low pressure side. I can't even get this off because the way it's set up. But this is the low pressure side. And if you see this little spring, this is the high pressure side, but there's no labels. I can't even see what this thing is even set to. But it's definitely this control holding us out. All right, we got zero volts. Across, we got 120. That means this is still holding us out. Press is started. I'm gonna try to open this all the way. It's definitely really high. It's like we're not moving water. All right, so the reason in a water cool system why you get high head pressure is basically we're not moving water. If it was a fan that was cooling it, it's basically like we're not moving any air. I truly wonder, are we, moving, are we actually getting water? I'm gonna close this off and open that up to see. It's gonna get messy <laughs> unless I dump it in a bucket but look at this area I don't think it's gonna be a big deal oh wow I was right I'm not getting water look when I pay attention to that that thing is open all the way come on that's like barely any water coming out of there This might, be this might be clogged though. We're literally just got no water in the line. Sometimes opening and closing the valve like something maybe gets stuck in between. like no water coming out of there typically from what I see but I do see it on both ways that the water regulating valve is the inlet well we got that open let me open up the other pipe that should shoot out okay that definitely shot out a bunch of stuff actually came out of there I wonder if we cleared anything Oh man, this water is like burning hot. Burning. 300 head pressure already. We just got to shut down. So I had good pressure flowing here. Had no pressure flowing here. I just want to see, is this the way it's set up? So I took off the, the inlet for this as well. And let's see if there's a difference water pressure oh wow that that was huge that was huge let me see if this is piped in the same way so from that back pipe over there goes into the inlet then that back pipe over there for the one that's having an issue also goes into the inlet 
All right, what this is telling me is that there's a clog. There's a clog in this line. We're not feeding water, so we're definitely not moving water. All right, so coming to a conclusion that we're not getting water through this pipe. I've never really had this issue before, but I'm thinking it's clogged at the valve right here or at the T. So what we're gonna have to try to do is cut this. Try to free up that valve. And if that doesn't work, then maybe I can tap off and tee off on this line that I know has water. All right, so we're gonna be cutting this line and trying to see if we can clear it up. Sometimes these valves get a little clogged, so I'm gonna try to cut it, try to stick something in there to clear it and braze a coupling back. If not, for emergency, I'm gonna have to tap off this line or in the future, I'm just gonna have to do a real, I'm gonna put in an actual T. So let's start off maybe right here. Let's cut this out. Somewhere close to the valve so I could stick something in there. Just gotta clear this. Oh, whoa. So how much water came out of there? We did not have that right before. I wonder if something is clogged in here. Just shook this out. Look how much dirt just came out of there. We're gonna have to blow this line out. Whoa, what is that? There's something in the pipe. Plastic. You know what that is? The fill. This is connected to a cooling tower. The fill for the cooling tower must be breaking apart. There's stuff inside here. Not sure if you guys can see, but I got my nitro tank here. I brought the pipe with me instead of bringing in the tank. Let's try to open this up and shoot something through it. Start by prepping the pipe. I'm gonna sand it down and I have a coupling. That's done. What I want to see is water shooting out. Oh yeah. We definitely got water shooting out now. We had that. We didn't have that before. So now we cleared the pipe. That's a beautiful thing. Now, let's get this flare connection back on. Let's start this up. Let's see what will happen. All right. Started. Head pressure is at a hundred. See, it's not climbing up like it was before. Let's give it a few minutes and see what happens. But this is a lot better. All right, so for 134A, our back pressure is at 27, and that makes sense since the box has been warm. We got the water valve open all the way, so our head pressure is really low. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restrict some water flow by bringing the spring down to bring the head pressure up. So you wanna do this little by little. All right. 
here's the box. And as you can see, temperatures are starting to come down. It was about room temperature at around 70 when I first started. So clearly we are definitely cooling. Let's just get this box down to where it needs to go. All right, all right. Got this tight space between here. But that was definitely the condensing unit we now know. And look at that. Look at that. Head pressure at 143, about 150 is normal. Our back pressure is normal. But look at our superheat. 40 degrees superheat, 6.1 degrees subcooling. We might be a little bit undercharged. Let's see. We do have a side glass. Side glass is clear. All right, so for the most part, we're just about where we need to be, but we could probably get a colder suction line and have the machine run for less time if we can get that superheat a bit down. But we pretty much got it just about where it should be. I'm just gonna wait for the temperatures in the box to satisfy, but there will be a couple of things I will recommend here is definitely to mount this control and even possibly change it at this point along with this one this this definitely has to be resolved when it comes to the wire all right so this is what's feeding the control and this is what's sending it back to the unit that thing gotta go let's get some bx with some bx connectors not a piece of an extension cord same thing for this one that that gotta go that's gross we should give this thing a little bit of a cleaning around i mean this thing is just in bad shape but definitely, let's just bring this thing up safely. Let's get these things off the floor where there's just constant water. And that's pretty much it. This thing, I'm sure could use some maintenance. Let's look inside the condition of the blower and things like that. But pretty much that's that. And we're gonna end this one right here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.